Is it is this is this fall or is this just like summer part two? Today we're gonna talk about what vegetables to grow, what tropicals to grow, what native plants are in bloom, and of course all the tips you need to know for the month of September for your Florida garden. And as always, I'm gonna be using my handy dandy Wild Floridian Garden Planner to help guide me through what you should be planting this month. So let's first talk about what vegetables can you grow in the month of September? And I think it would honestly be easier to say which plants you shouldn't grow because the list is long when it hits September. We are officially, well, from a seed starting perspective, heading out of the temperatures that really make tropical vegetables grow and we're into all the classic vegetables. I'm talking warm weather crops. I'm talking cold weather crops. I'm talking tomatoes and peppers and lettuce and onions and carrots and spinach and uh, beets and radishes. You can of course grow all of your brassicas like broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage and Brussels sprouts and kale all of those right now. Go ahead and get your seeds started. Actually, September is one of those unique months where we can grow a lot of things because it's the crossover point for warm weather crops and cold weather crops. So what that means for you though, is if you're considering doing warm weather crops like your tomatoes and eggplants and peppers, we're kind of heading towards the end of the season where you can grow them. Now for my South Floridians, you're gonna definitely have more time because you're in the South and you stay really hot and warm for a really long time. So you got a little bit more time beyond September, but my Central Floridians, my Northern Floridians, you definitely, if you're starting by seed, let's get those in now. My North Floridians and my Central Floridians, you actually may have time beyond September because this is like a really hot year. So our warmer season may go a little bit longer. If you wanna make sure you don't have to buy starts and you wanna start your own, definitely September is the month. Also September is one of those unique months because we have two transitional crops that get to pop up and sneak in there that we don't plant for huge chunks of the year, but this is one of those months that we can plant them. And that is of course your classic spinach and strawberries. If you're considering going and getting some strawberries, this would be the time to order them and get them in the ground. And if you want some help with understanding the process for planting those strawberries after you order them, Check out this video right here where my cutie patootie and I went and planted some of our bare root strawberries. And now you may be saying, but Jacqueline, that's great. I love your list, but I don't know which tomato to order. Which kale should I order? Well, if you wanna know what the varieties that I'm gonna be using this season, go ahead and check out this video, 20 plus varieties that I'm using in my fall, winter, spring vegetable garden so that you can go figure out what's gonna work best for you. I will link that video at the end of this video so you can check that out. And since so many of you are starting by seed, also make sure that you check out this video where we talk about mistakes to avoid because I have done this enough years now that I've made all of the mistakes. Well, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. And I hope I can help you avoid some of the same mistakes. Now, one of the watch outs and one of the tips that I do give in that video is that you want to buy extra seeds. Florida is known Known for having hot weather and warm weather but we do have a very short cold season but this year has been extra hot and because of that we've actually had some really really warm ocean temperatures so much of Florida's climate is actually determined by our ocean temperatures that's why a lot of the country when they're getting all those cold snaps we will actually stay in the 70s and 60 degrees and we won't ever hit temperatures that are freezing and with the ocean waters being so warm this year we can expect that our warm season is gonna last quite a bit longer. So while I'm telling you can start brassicas, I'm telling you can start other things like onions and carrots and lettuce. We may find that these plants become extra stressed out because our warm season goes a lot longer than it typically does. Which is why if you are gonna start seeds in the month of September, definitely make sure that you have extra seeds on hand just in case we lose them because the temperatures are so warm. It's not just the heat that might kill your seedlings, it's actually the fact that by staying so warm, lots and lots of bugs are gonna be hanging out much longer than they typically would. And they're gonna be hungry and your little seedlings are just the perfect thing to eat. Those nice, tender, sweet little leaves are just super attractive to bugs and there's a ton of them at this time of year. But here's one of the great things, even though it's so hot out, it's so humid and man, that sun is still really intense. We are still in some very, very intense sunlight. The great thing from a vegetable gardening perspective is most of your vegetable gardening when it comes to seed starting can be done in protected spaces on lanai's and in patios or even indoors, which means that you can spend less time out in this weather that's like, ugh. there's more than one use for the planner. <laughs> so if you've been getting really down about all the summer heat, 
seed starting is a great way for you to get back into gardening without having to spend too much time outside. When it comes to tropical plants, most tropical plants, of course, we talked about this last month and even for South Florida, we're basically the time period, just, just hold off. Leave those till next year's. Your bananas, your papayas, all these tropical fruiting trees, they're really, you're taking a big risk if you'd start any new tropicals at this time of year because, well, in theory, we could get cold snaps and if they're not really well established, they might, you know, go kaput. So do make sure this month though with tropicals that you're checking on them to see if any harvests are starting so that you can monitor them so that you can make the most of all your tropical crops. But there are still a couple of tropicals that you can put in at this time of year. Things like sugarcane and pineapples. They actually do really well most of the year. So if you want to go put those in. Now, when it does come to tropical crops and a lot of our tropical Florida friendly plants, this is actually a time of year that you should I don't know if you should do the work because the heat and the sun and the intensity is really bad right now, but I would definitely be making a punch list, whether it's in your planner or somewhere else. You want to start putting together a plan for pruning and doing some maintenance on your tropical plants. We're heading out of summer and all these tropical plants just went nuts and they grew like crazy and they are so happy and they might be looking really untidy and it might start feeling overwhelming. <laughs> So if you can't get to it this month, definitely start putting together a list and putting together a game plan of how you're gonna tidy up your tropicals. This is an orchid. I have no particular tip about this either. It's just pretty and it finally bloomed. Ben and I have been going through actually a lot of our flowering plants this month and trying to get them a bit contained. Everything from our dwarf poncianas to our xoras to hibiscuses. We are trying to knock all of them back just a bit because we want to give them some time to recover before it gets cold out because they're not big fans of the cold. And this would allow them to grow and fill in and maybe throw out some extra blooms, but while not looking like absolutely crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, and speaking of someone who needs to get pruned again, our giant flamboyant Ponciana, it actually has put out blooms, making it really hard for the choice that we need to make about what we're gonna do with this tree. <sighs> Oh, I go back and forth every day. <laughs> you may be thinking it's just all of our tropicals that have been loving the heat and the humidity and been putting out blooms, but honestly, there are a ton of native plants that are going to bloom right now. You all have heard me talk about this plant over and over again, and that is dotted horsemet, AKA spotted bee balm. This is one of the plants I'm always telling y'all, put near your vegetable garden. Well, right now, even in this very shady location, it is going into bloom and it looks awesome. For those of my friends who are really into English cottage gardens, romantic flowers, wildflowers, this is definitely a native plant that you wanna add in. And of course, it's one of our edible native plants too. So if you're looking for an herb substitute, it does have like a minty oregano-ish flavor. So if you're thinking like Mediterranean dishes, this would be a great one to add into your garden. Another native plant that you should consider that has been blooming on and off most of the season, but really enjoys fall is ironweed. And this is actually our giant ironweed, which is gorgeous. It gets huge, it gets tall, and it has these bold purple flowers that hummingbirds and butterflies really like. It's definitely a plant that you would wanna put something near that's tall so that as it gets to its full height, you can actually tie it up a little bit or you can let it flop over either's totally fine. I like to just use this pine during the, the tail end of its season, but it is so pretty. Butterflies are mad that I'm here, so I'll move. Now, ironweed isn't the only one that has bloomed on and off through most of the year. Narrow leaf yellow top has also been blooming on and off, but now that we're hitting, you know, fall-ish time period, it has exploded with blooms. If you guys have heard me talk about the salt and pepper being a favorite of pollinators during the winter month, Narrow leaf yellow top has hands down in my garden been the pollinator favorite. The challenge with this plant is that it's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of flower heads all over a single plant. So it seeds everywhere. Super easy to pull, but just know that once you have one, after a couple years, you will have hundreds of them all around. But if you're thinking about for your fall vegetable crops, something to have in your garden that's gonna pull in lots of pollinators, pull in the butterflies. I don't know if you just saw that monarch, but I did not plan that, of course, because nature. But this is one of those plants that, man oh man, it's gorgeous. And it is just giving kind of that, if you're looking for that wildflower field look, here you go. This is the one. I'm recommending it. 
as proof, this is all narrow leaf yellow top in my neighbor Cliff's yard. That is from the single plant that I planted right there years ago. And another native plant that is just, well, it's just one that you have to have. If you're going with native plants, you gotta get a fire bush. This is my neighbor's, his is huge. You don't have to let yours get huge. You can actually keep it way smaller if you want to. Fire bush is definitely one of those plants that loves the intense summers of Florida and thrives on it. And it is a great bloomer and a standard native plant that if you're looking for not a wildflower that has that's there for part of the year and then may not come back the next year. This is definitely one of those perennials that goes and goes and goes and it attracts all the things. We've talked about it before. It's got the bees and the butterflies and the birds and the hummingbirds. They all like it. So if you're not sure where to start with native plants, I would definitely start with firebush, which is so happy at this time of year. Of course, a Florida fall classic is the beauty Perry. These are coming in to full ripeness so that the birds can make their great migration. Which is actually one of the things to make sure that you're aware of is as we head into September, we're really getting into monarch migration and the beginning of potential songbird migration heading south. So having these plants like beautyberry, which you can make beautyberry jam in, but most of my beautyberries just go to, you know, wildlife. You won't usually see them picking on it yet, but come in the next couple months, Yes, they're gonna start picking away and picking away and picking away at the beautyberry. And what makes this a little bit different as versus like your fire bush is this is one that actually likes some shade. So if you have one of those shady areas, especially under oaks, this is a great plant. I honestly don't have any tips around sky flower or any particular reason that you need to plant it other than it's just pretty. So you can see some popping up in the middle of my sunshine mimosa. So, you know, if you're just looking for blue and pretty, sky flower. It's hot out. But we're still getting stuff done, right? And while I'm talking about migrations and fall, I mean, one of the big tips is though, is September is still a lot like summer. The heat's still up. The sun intensity still up. The humidity is still up. I mean, and while the rain isn't typically consistent, it's usually kind of, we go days and days without any rain and then we get a deluge. Because of that, we get full, sun days, which makes it really hard to be out here in the garden. A big thing you need to keep in mind is if you're starting to beat yourself up because stuff are, is getting a little bit out of hand or you haven't started things yet because it's just overwhelming to be outside, that's normal. It is really hard still to garden in September, especially in Central and South Florida and even probably North Florida. It's still really hard to garden from just being outside. So you do need to still practice those same summer tips of garden early or garden late. But honestly, the lows have been so high that it's still really hot even before the sun gets up. So if you're feeling down, it's okay. Just break things into small pieces and just figure out what you have to get done and continue to use this month as a time period to plan and get your head wrapped around what vegetables you want to start, what garden things you need to go do, what maintenance you need to do. And don't kick yourself if you're feeling like it's just too hard to be outside because it is, it is hard. It's okay. Get this plus other tips in your Wild Floridian planner and make sure you lock in your 2024 planner at www.wildfloridian.net slash planner presale. As of today, go and order your 2044 copy and lock it in. So if you're feeling a little bit motivated and you want to one, know how to go plant bare root strawberries, check out this video here. And if you want to know what varieties of seeds I'm going to be using throughout the vegetable gardening season, check out this video here. Avoid these mistakes when starting seeds. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!